Hey guys, you're very much welcome to the Uganda Kololo Independence Grounds. Yes, so I've just entered and yeah, that is the independence monument, uh, the day Uganda got its independence. So uh, you're very much welcome, um, if it is a possible and uh, if you're new here, kindly do subscribe, like, share and comment. So uh, I just want to like be keeping you guys updated of everything, right? Uh, that happens when I'm in Kampala and I'm not in the village, I'm in the city. So uh, this special day, as you can see by the crowd, uh, is one of the largest uh, women conferences that I've ever uh, that I've ever attended. I am so passionate about growth, uh, personal development, human development, and you know things of a kind. So uh, this was organized by Fanero, uh, uh, Pastor Grace Lubega, um, to, to, to build women, basically, or to build women know their positions uh, in Christ, in the world, in the families, and blah, blah, blah. So I came quite late, and uh, so that is the crowd. I'm just looking for where to sit. So yeah, I hope to learn something out of this. Uh, so I was directed by an usher, uh, where to sit. So I'm literally following them. Those are the ushers. I'm literally following them. And this is how large it is. Uh, sadly, I actually got to sit behind. So kind guys watch the end and learn something from this. Let's dive right into it. Um, I came during a panel discussion session. And it was so amazing what these people have learned, to, um, these people have taught. For me, as someone who is not married, it really meant a lot to me. Never use my words to speak your words. <laughs> if you have issues, settle them. Thank you, Father. Don't bring them here, here as a master. But I found that in most cases, we want to force them. And I want to assure you. The more you try to force them, the more they will steer around them. Simply, do your responsibility. Mm. You must do your responsibility. Doing our responsibility in marriages is not contingent on what someone does or does not do. Mm. <laughs> or even after you left the relationship, it's a responsibility. Love, yes, infatuation, feelings, and emotions, yeah, they have to be applied to attract you to the other, but eventually they went away. Mm. But then what we uh, say is, is your role, is your mandate, is your responsibility. And doing your part is not contingent, does not contingent, does not depend on what one yeah, does or does not do. Yeah. Is it clear to you? Yeah. Whether he does it or he does not do it. Whether he abuses me or he does not, I will still do my responsibility. Wow. So it cannot be, and I'll give you, uh, that all says in my work with the Lord, is that at one time I refused, I said, ah, let him also do something, and I was like, mm hmm. But one day the Lord told me, when you stand before me, you'll be alone. Yeah. And what I'll first ask you is, have you done it? And the answer will not be, you see, when he did like this, I ought, it will be yes or no. Mm. So I want us to know it, all of us, even men and women. Whatever the case, do what the Lord tells you to do. The rest leave it to you. Okay. The God lies before them. Now, please allow me to speak from a man Perspective. The reason why we carry some men here today is because we miss this on men's conference where next year will happen. Because it's also important. Yeah. It's dangerous to receive it's dangerous to receive only from one perspective. It's like if you've noticed in the world, 
the biggest challenge when it comes to sex education mm. and in the world. It is because almost all the philosophers that define sex were actually men. Mm. If you go back through history, Sigmund Freud, the Maslow's, and when you notice, uh, they are usually men. So, I don't know if it's something we have read it. When you, when you define it from a manly perspective, or when you teach sex education from a manly perspective, which is mostly now in our secondary school text, mm. it does not make sense for a woman. Mm. Because I'll give you an sure. example. <coughs> I am a pastor who has dealt with women who are sexual abused. Mm. Uh, you hear men, mm. they come and tell you I was abused by my uncle, my father. If you have met a woman who was sexually abused when they were children, for example, it is hard for a man to understand why the raped one actually carries shame. It is so funny. Because from a manly perspective, I'm like, but you didn't ask for it. Say that if you want. I thought the shame, the shame should be from the side of, of the man. So why does this woman carry shame? And then, as I started to study how women feel, I realized it's within her nature to take responsibility. Yeah. Even when it's not her what? Her fault. Yeah. It is within her nature to take what? Responsibility. So I, I got another understanding of how a, human, a woman's brain what? works. But if you don't understand that, it is easy for you to sort of slide over what is. It's the same thing when it comes to. Now, let me give you a, a money perspective. Men, all men are born with an ego. Mm, yeah. We only have them in degrees. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Some are defined by culture. You said you are a man. You are a chicken. You talk to me. That too. And they speak in capital letters. Yeah. Some egos are tolerable. Mm. Some egos are overinflated. <laughs> That's what we call toxic masculinity. Where a woman can look at the man and says, Don't look at me. You see? Now, those also vary. What? Mm. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if you find a man with zero ego, don't marry him. <laughs> because when a man does not have his zero ego, that means they don't carry enough pride you know? as a man to do things men should do, which is also dangerous. dangerous. Because sometimes that ego is important to tell me, but I'm a man, why should the woman provide for me? Mm. We no. yeah. Now imagine a guy with a zero ego, you will stay home watching TV yeah. as you got one. And some of them, the ego working in working is zero, but then the ego in being served is up there. I know, right? Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Now, for the lady who is listening to me, especially now, this is not only for when you're dealing with an indifferent non-believer. Some of you also have trouble with born again men who are tax speaking. They are worse. Often. She called them jokers. In Fanero, we, we, we don't have jokers. <laughs> anyway, but it's a fact that some people are men, whether born again or not, there's certain things that are not yet what? Born again, yes. But I don't know, different as crazy as it is. What are the parts where I can introduce this book? What are the times I can have this conversation? What are the times when I just need to keep quiet? Because the only way to minister to him is silence. What are the times where the gospel operating on my life will cause me not to give the opinion which I know I'm right, yeah. but because it is not the right time where he is right now, he cannot receive from me. Mm. The day you understand when your husband or how your husband responds to you and how he's able to receive, like Esther, he will tell you, even if you want half of my kingdom, okay. have it. I think that's the chest conversation. That's why the Bible in Peter says discipline. The word chest there is discipline. 
your conversation must be disciplined. Discipline means only the Holy Spirit can help you understand how to deal with him. Without that relationship, it's like even as husbands, there are things you will want to send the Holy Spirit tells you, are not now. And you respect the person of the Holy Spirit. But don't think that every time you have to eh, impose and, and so to conclude on this matter, pray for the wisdom to manage the ego of the unbeliever and the indifferent. Or sometimes even the believer that is fine. It is amazing God sort of will guide you in ways to know how to minister. It's called ministering to the heart of your husband. So after the panel of discussion, uh, we went into worship, deep worship, and um... <laughs> praise God. Yes, sir. He goes to his man. <laughs> I can't hear him my way. He said, you're the one who can understand this. <laughs> the, the father has purpose. <laughs> the man has the blessing. <laughs> he has the promise. <laughs> but you will understand <laughs> when I say <laughs> that the older <laughs> shall serve the younger. <laughs> he won't agree. <laughs> hey. But it is through you <laughs> that this should be executed. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Glory to God. Where are you? Oh. As history is being written. Where are you? As men are building cathedrals. Where are you? As men are filling stadiums. Where are you? As men are changing economies. It is important to have that conversation. That if you're not on the pulpit, you want to and you decide to go political, go so If you choose to become an engineer, go so big. If you choose to become a businesswoman, go so big. If you choose to be a parent, go so big. If you choose to be a doctor, go so big. And there is a woman on the sound of my voice yes. who will one day hear somebody say, usually, he speaks a dad. A generation is being transformed, but you cannot only stay having children, only children. That's all. Which is also okay. But there's a higher place. Mary was married. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? That was purpose. They were together. You remember the man called um, Apollos? The Bible says he beheld the doctrine of John the Baptist. <laughs> And not of the new man. And the minister of grace. Then two people call him on a side. Now listen to the order. In verses 26. And he began to speak both in the synagogue. That is who? Apollos. And when Aquila and Priscilla had, they took him aside and expounded unto him the way of God more accurately. They both participated in the transformation yes. of a man's ministry. Yes. Let me speak about the man. Priscilla had a place. Priscilla had a place. Are you following what I'm saying? Were they married? Yes. 
But they had a vision of God. Oh. And then it was speak. Oh. Yes. And the next verse says, and when he was disposed to Achaia, yeah. the Bible says the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to, dis to receive him. When he had come, oh. and he helped them much, oh. which had believed oh. through grace. Oh. Because oh. some and after the preaching by the way it was so powerful we entered into this uh, freestyle prayer where people had to just walk up and down and just pray and uh, yeah that is how it went <laughs> And after the prayer, oh, of course, this was still during the prayer, but after the prayer, oh, service was done. It took an hour. And uh, it was, it was, it was amazing. So literally, people are going back now. People are done. Uh, people have been dispersed. Uh, one thing I liked about this is they really managed time. Uh, credit to them for that. There was uh, amazing time management. And to me, what I took from this whole thing is uh, submission in marriage is is a two way thing. Um, a man has to understand that and women have to understand that. And also, a submission is not a weakness. Uh, and most importantly, the devil is actually not after your husband as a woman or your children as a woman uh, or your workplace or your investments or anything. The devil is after you. So whichever thing happens in your life, you just have to know that the devil is waiting for you. Yeah, so take your positions and pray. I, those were my key takeaways. Then we have um, this section where there were all, all sorts of foods, you know, fast foods, local foods, and, and every other thing. So people were able to be eating from here. And by the way, it was just for one day. It was, it was just uh, for one day. But of course, it gathered people uh, from all over the world. Exactly. So, yeah. There are all sorts, uh, sorts of food sold here. I just wanted to, to show you guys. I wouldn't, uh, I mean, I would not move uh, so close. I mean, I could not uh, move so close because uh, people were so many. And literally me, I was not really buying anything. As a matter of fact, I just wanted to show you guys. But it was worth it, right? This is the largest women gathering I've ever attended. Uh, we've come to the end of this vlog. I hope you guys watch the end. Let me know what you think. I mean, for the possible subscribe, like, share, and comment. Bye.